All right, what's good with y'all YouTube? Finally got another video for you guys. I know it's been about two weeks, but I've just been taking the time off to try and figure out what, what I should really make for you guys. And it seems like you guys are wanting me to make some guitar loops. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And everyone's been asking for the drum kit, so I'm finally dropping it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a free version and a paid version. The free one is gonna have like all my favorite drums in there. It's gonna be a lot smaller. And then the paid version is actually gonna be the whole thing. So you guys can check the description for that. And I'm gonna be using those drums in this video too. So let's get started. All right, so this is a loop, like a little example I'll be showing you guys. This is a guitar loop I made with this Contact VST. It is by Orange Tree Samples. It's called the Evolution Modern Nylon. So yeah, like I said, this is gonna be the VST I'm using. In my opinion, it's one of the best sounding uh, guitar VSTs. So that's why I really like it. All right, so this is what that sounds like. So yeah, this might look like a lot right now, but I'll show you guys. It's actually pretty simple once you break it down. All right, so I'm gonna just open a blank version of FL real quick. And then I'm gonna be working in half time, so I'm gonna set it to probably like 61. I usually like working in half time. It's just a little easier for me. But you can do whatever you like doing, and then I'm gonna open up this, uh, this contact library. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is link this to the first mixer track, and then go into the piano roll. All right, so before we get started, I'm gonna try and explain something to you guys. So if you think about it, when you're playing a guitar in real life, it's a bit different than if you were to click in notes. So whenever you're playing a guitar, you're never gonna actually hit every note at the same time, you know? So like you're always strumming it. So you're always gonna to wanna to strum your notes when you're clicking them in. And that is like one of the biggest tips I think people have to understand. Because if you're not doing this, it's never gonna sound like a real guitar. And then the second thing you guys should know is always go to your helpers, scale highlighting, and set it to some kind of natural minor key which is what I always like doing. That previous guitar loop I made in G minor, but for the sake of the video, I'll use F sharp. All right, so I'm gonna just start at the root note, F sharp four, and then I'm just gonna make a triad. So when you're making a triad, you're always gonna wanna do a simple formula that I always follow. You skip one note in scale, skip another. There you go, you got a simple triad right here. So I already like all those notes together, they kind of sound, I mean, they sound good together, but it really doesn't sound like that natural of a guitar. So what I'm gonna do, zoom in a little bit, hold Alt on my keyboard, and just strum them. so I'm liking how that sounds already so now what I'm gonna do is just try and think of a melody in my head and just click it down into the piano roll
All right, so I'm liking how this loop is sounding already. So usually what I would do is I would keep it pretty simple, just two different chords, take this and duplicate it, and then try and add another like little top melody over top the second part just to add a little bit of variation. Alright, so at this point, this is pretty much where I would just cut it. So if I were to actually end up making this into a beat, what I would do is take the pattern into the playlist, duplicate it twice, select this highlighting part right here, and I would go into my master and add a add a little instance of Edison, change it to on play, record, and just play it. Oh, make sure you're in song first. So I gotta go back into Edison, delete that, click record again, and then hit play. Also turn off the metronome, because that will be in there. All right, so now I'd go back into Edison, hit the left or the right arrow on my keyboard twice, delete the second part, and drag and hold this to bring it into the playlist. And I delete this. I'd assign this to mixer track one, and then I would just go ahead and try and find some cool effects I could add to this to make it sound even more real and maybe a little better. So first thing I'm going to add, like always, RC Retro Color. I'm telling you guys, go ahead and cop this for yourselves. It's one of the best plugins out there. So I'm going to bring the vinyl to vinyl 2, and I'm going to keep it at like right around 20-something. So I like how that's sounding. So all I did was add the noise, a little bit of wobble. <laughs> wobble. Um, I'll probably leave that at like 12%. I had changed the distortion type to crunch, and I have that at about a little over 50%. I added a little bit of reverb, but I brought the decay down. And then I always just keep this magnetic one on. And I also took out a little bit of the high end and a little bit of the low end. So for this loop, I want it to sound like more of a, like an acoustic guitar, but I also want to add a little bit of like a chorus sounding effect. So what I always do is I go into Guitar Rig, and I use this preset that I have called, uh, it's called Clean Chorus, but it's a little too much when it's on all the way. So I go to this bus knob right here, and I bring it down to about like 20%. And that sounds like this.
All right, so I'm already liking how that sounds. Like, I pretty much probably just keep it like that. But one thing I always do is I'll go and grab a piano from Omnisphere or, like, any type of, like, grand piano. So I'll just go into Keyscape and grab this grand piano right here. Click this plus button to add a new pattern. I'll just name it Piano. Then I'll go into the first pattern. I'm going to copy the, the MIDI. Then go to pattern 2, Piano 1. Go into Omnisphere and paste it in here. Then go back into the playlist and add this under because remember we rendered this out. And then I'll assign the piano to Mixer Track 2. I'm also going to bring the velocity down inside the MIDI just so it's a bit softer. And then I'll go into an EQ. Oops, not Effectrix. Fab Filter. I use this uh, narrow preset. Just do something like around right here so it takes out a lot of the highs and takes out pretty much all the lows. And let's hear how that sounds together. So as you can tell, that kind of just fills out the melody, makes it sound a little better. But I am going to go ahead and go into RC Retro Color, take the noise off, bring the distortion down, widen it a bit right here, and just bring that wobble up to like 12%. All right, so and that's pretty much it for the loop. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna have it organized to how I'd want it. So I'd probably have it start with the guitar only and then have it go into the more full melody part with the piano. And then I would go back into Edison, delete this again, click record, make sure it's on play, and then just record this whole loop. All right, so now I'm gonna delete all this out of the playlist, go back into Edison, Right arrow twice, click delete, drag it back into the playlist, assign this. Actually, what I'm going to do first is, so since we have these two separate pieces, I'm going to split them, make the second one unique. And this is just so we can have them on separate mixer tracks. So I'm going to assign this one to three and this one to four. I'm going to make a new pattern, call it drums, drag it underneath, just duplicate that four times. And then I'm going to go ahead and just start adding some drums on this, and then I'll be back to you guys when I'm done with that. Alright, so I got the drums finished, so now I'm just show you guys how I would probably lay this out. So, if you remember before, we have only the guitar right here in this loop, and then the guitar plus the piano right here. So, I would actually start it with the piano just to make sure it's like a more full melody. And then when the drums actually come in, I'm going to have it go right to the guitar. And then for a verse, we'll have it come back in with the, with the piano. And then pretty much just repeat this the whole time. All right, so that's honestly pretty much it for this video. I try to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't really want to focus on the drums too much in this video, but like I said, I am dropping that drum kit, so check the description below for more information. But like, I just wanted to show you guys how I make my guitar loops. I hope that helped you guys. If it did, go ahead and drop a comment. Tell me what you want to see next. I know a lot of you said you wanted a mixing and mastering video, so I'm actually going to film that right now. But as for making guitar loops, that's all I got for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.